just casually listening to it. I put a donk on it before I start recording because why the fuck not? Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my potluck wrap up. I do feel like I recorded this one like five minutes ago. It has actually been a month. Doesn't feel like it. May seems to have ceased to exist and it was meant to be the month where I got loads done and it just fucked off and I don't appreciate that. May, if I could have you back, I would. Hmm. <laughs> But I did do quite a bit of reading, uh, not as much as I'd have liked. Same with my writing, didn't do as much of that as I'd have liked either, but we're gonna ignore that. I still have so many books in this pot that it really won't matter. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull names out of the hat of books that I've read, and then I'm gonna tell you about them in as little time as physically possible. My average is about six books per video, and I have over 20 to get through. So we're gonna open up the timer timer says 20 minutes because that is the amount of time of yours I'm willing to waste on this we're pressing play or as you might call it go uh, and then we're gonna just get start so let's hope we get some of the May books we still have January books in here that's what's really scaring me do I even remember what happened in them I don't know uh, let's find out so the first one I'm going to review very very quickly for you is the Witch Boy, which is a graphic novel. Now, it says that I read this in May. I think I read this either the first week of May or the last week of April. This is a graphic novel about a young boy who is very um, gender non-conforming, borderline non-binary, certainly hints to that LGBTQ spectrum, is not a traditional male witch, and they very much treat men and women in this society, especially the magical society, as very, very binary. Women learn specific types of magics, men learn specific types of magics, and never the two shall meet. Um, obviously this is a witch boy, so he is learning or trying to learn um, the magic that the women are learning. He feels more of an affinity towards that, but there is this running plot twist that essentially his grandfather did that, and turns into an evil thing. Anyway, some of the boys start going missing and he has to use his magic because of reasons. I did really, really enjoy this. I thought it was really, really sweet. It, ha it hits on a lot of really topical notes without being like shoved down your throat, which I really appreciated. This was gifted to me by Carolyn because of course all the books that I love are gifted to me by Carolyn. I did enjoy this one. I especially enjoyed how powerful the women are. There's such a wide variety and diversity of women in this book, which is is always I mean you can always trust a woman to write women well so I appreciated that and I would definitely recommend it if anyone's looking for a really wholesome LGBTQ ripped graphic novel this would be top of my recommends list there are more in the series so I will probably check those out um, but overall it was just lovely and wholesome and a great way to start this video so we'll move on to the next one okay. next to be summarized very briefly is an april one i can tell by the coloring on it and that is catherine house which is the one that i didn't get out of the box no wrong box right, there it is found it found it it's because i put it aside for another video uh, but didn't film that video first which was silly of me anyway catherine house by elizabeth thomas it has lgbtq rep written by an author of color it's a debut novel nothing happens nothing happens essentially a whole bunch of students go to a college slash university they all have really dark secrets and it explores those but it is such a modern gothic in the traditional sense in that there's spooky vibes it's very decadent it's beautifully written but nothing fucking happens it took me so long to read it because i just couldn't you're drawn in like it's so beautiful and i gave it five stars i don't know if uh, just vibes is a reason enough to give something five stars but that's what I gave it the ending was obviously very very rushed there is kind of like stuff in it that never really gets fully explained they talk about like a science or a new material subject um, which is again is very gothic-y um, and I really really enjoyed it and I know this has been a real Marmite book for people where some people have fucking loved it and some people have hated it I am definitely on the side of those who loved it 
but I definitely think that if you're like, oh, I might give gothic fiction a go, this might not be the one, because if you're used to very character-driven or plot-driven narratives or very action-driven narratives, this doesn't have any of that. There's no plot development, they're still awful at the end, the main character is not a nice person. It's very very difficult to empathise with her because she doesn't want you to empathise with her, she doesn't want your sympathy or your pity, she just wants to get fucking on with her life and just continue to hide. You know, she treats her boyfriend like trash but her boyfriend treats her like trash and not in like a traditional like domestic sense, like they're good to each other but they're not good for each other. Um, and it's just really really dark but beautifully beautifully written. I mean it says on the front that you know it's impossible not to be seduced. It is seductive, it has this just really beautiful style of writing that I'm just fucking obsessed with so I will be keeping an eye out for anything else Elizabeth Thomas writes because this fucking got me like it was really really good but I appreciate that if you're new to gothic fiction and you're like I need something else this isn't necessarily the one that I would recommend you but if you're like oh, oh I do love a bit of gothic fiction then yeah fucking go for it or if you're into like literary fiction and you want something a little bit darker and a little less introspective yes I loved this five stars excellent work if I can keep this pace up which I won't but if I can keep this pace up uh then we'll do quite well I mean a lot of these books I did really enjoy which will make it easier here we go another one law is I mean this could not be more of an opposite to Catherine House um, but I didn't mind that. This is a Greek retelling that uses old mythology to kind of set up this new um, situation where basically Zeus has kicked gods out of Olympus. Once every seven years gods get kicked out of Olympus and they travel to earth and when humans kill them those humans then take on their powers and can go to Olympus and of the original gods there are only a handful left the rest are humans and then they end up killing each other it's really fucking brutal the opening scenes are fight scenes and murder scenes this is action-packed it doesn't stop it doesn't breathe it doesn't really have any character development at all it is very much fight 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 kissing fight 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 which i also really enjoy which is why you know the if you could describe me in two split personalities it would be these i loved this this is very much the cruel prince but with greek retellings in that you've got the family drama and political intrigue and just action 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 fight see fight see fight see I loved it. I think I gave it four stars in the end. The, the ending was just a bit too neat for me, but that is always an issue for me when it comes to standalones. Sometimes they just like to go and it all ends and then we'll tie that up and then... And I just... I nearly threw this across my room then. I didn't mean to. I very much enjoyed this. Um, and I would absolutely recommend it to anyone who's got even an inkling of interest in Greek mythology. This was meant to be a buddy read. I rocked up to the buddy read like three weeks later than everyone else did but at some point I'm sure we will all catch up about this and I will talk about how much I really really enjoyed it. The main character Law is really really interesting because it has all those like cliche tropes of her wanting to avenge her family but she also feels inherently guilty. She is responsible for their death and it's really interesting seeing how she punishes herself um, and then develops from that. Now there isn't like necessarily character development in the fact that it's a long process. She doesn't really get over it. There's no real transference there. It just kind of exists within her, but it's a really interesting facet to her personality. Yeah, trauma. I don't know why I'm so into books with trauma, but apparently I am. And Alori is reversing. But anyway, yes, so that's another great one. And again, great for time, we've done three in ten minutes let's keep going that's two. Oh, okay i'll do both um the first one is solitaire by alice oseman this might be controversial i didn't enjoy this it wasn't that it was poorly written or that it didn't look at really important topics of isolation and suicide and like trauma in that sense I just, it was a real shame. In the Heartstopper series, Tori is my favorite character. Like she just pops up to have these like little snarky moments with Charlie and then she like disappears. And I love the mystery and the mystique that she has around her because she says so little. And what she does says is just comedy gold. 
And I don't know if it's just a case of once you're inside the mind of a character you like and it's not what you expect, that it's really jarring. But I just really, really didn't like that th it doesn't matter who she's hanging out with, she feels isolated by them. In not a, an understandable anxiety way, it certainly wasn't understandable or I couldn't relate in that sense. But just that she seems bored with everyone and she just spends a lot of time like scrolling through. I thought that the actual solitaire plotline was really, really interesting. I appreciate it looks at depression and anxiety and how distanced she feels. So when I say it's not relatable to me, it's not relatable to my experiences of that. So I found that quite jarring. And I'm not saying that other people who've had those experiences will feel the same. I appreciate that depression, unfortunately, is a cruel spectrum of feelings and lack of, and there's no right way to have depression. This wasn't one that replicated what my experiences of depression in my family and friends is. And I just found it jarring because it was Tori and she has always been like the strongest character in the Heartstopper series. Now I appreciate that this came first and then the Heartstop series is essentially prequels. I appreciate that. There was a lot, I think the problem was, there was a lot that I expected of this. People have loved this. People have ranted about this. The reason I was desperate to get my hands on a copy was because so many people had recommended it to me and it was so hyped in my mind that it ended up kind of falling flat. The actual characters are very witty. I really enjoyed the humor, but there just weren't enough light moments for me. Um, and during a time where I'm not feeling at my best, this wasn't really it for me. I am going to continue reading Alice Eisman. It hasn't put me off Alice Eisman. I just don't think of the Alice Eisman novels and graphic novels, this is the one for me. So I will be unhauling this one, but I'm going to try Radio Silence and Loveless and just see if it's a case of, okay, for a debut, this wasn't it, but actually the writing style has improved because I fucking love Heartstopper. Like I'm so excited to get onto volume four. I've had it for weeks and I haven't got to it yet, but that's not because I don't want to. It's just because I feel obligated to finish other things first. So I'm, I do really enjoy Osman's writing. This just wasn't it. And I think you're always gonna have that one book of an author that you don't like as much as the rest. And I'm quite glad that I think it's gonna be solitaire because I think that means that no matter what I read of hers next, I'm going to enjoy it. So that is exciting at the very least. So it wasn't my fave, but I expect better things in the future, which I think I'm hoping is definitely a positive spin on that. Uh, and then the one that I pulled out alongside it by accident was The Last Day. Oh, this was fucking pedestrian. Right, okay, so I can like really lean into how much I didn't enjoy this because I don't think I'm going to offend anyone. I'm certainly not gonna tag Andrew Hunter Murray in this but I am gonna give you a little bit of backstory in why, again, I was so disappointed with this. So Andrew Hunter Murray is, I think, I think his background is either in literature or science or a mixture of the two, but essentially he is one of the QI elves. He has a podcast that says there's no, like that's called like No Such Things as Fish, which is really great. And more importantly to me anyway, he is one of the lead actors in Ostentatious, which is a comedy improvisation play where they basically, the audience gives the performers different Austin titles and they're all parodies of Austin novels um, or just random titles and then they just make them up as they go along and it's really genuinely very funny and he is a very funny intelligent man and when I knew found out that this was going to be his debut novel I pre-ordered it like the moment I heard because I was so excited it's so pedestrian like it's so commercial everything that your dad could want in a book is in this and that was so disappointing. The premise of this is really cool. The world has stopped spinning. So one side of the planet is plunged into darkness and the other side is just in perpetual sunlight. And there are only a few habitable places left. Now the main character lives on an oil rig and she is tracking the water flow system and how cold water and warm water are mixing to create new ecosystems, which is a really interesting concept, except she only spends the first two chapters on the oil rig before she goes to London, because apparently England is in that slither of countryside which survived. That tiny, tiny little island survived where massive continents didn't which was my first issue with this. 
Um, I get it, you know, it's written by a British man. Write what you know, I get that, but I just, I feel like they could have done anything else. Um, the diversity in this is pretty piss poor. I don't remember there being any characters of colour. I don't remember there being any LGBTQ characters either, so that was pretty abysmal. Um, there is one Russian slash Romanian woman, I think. That's about it. Um, and the plot twist was interesting, but it just... I was bored by that point. It's a lot of the main character rocking up to places looking for clues, getting conked on the head, waking up somewhere else, finding out either her ex-husband or her brother has bailed her out of the situation, her relationship with her brother breaking down and her relationship with her ex-husband building back up. And it was just everything about it was so predictable and just so pedestrian. It's just the one word that I keep coming back to because it just feels like what was the fucking point? What was the point? Like, it's just, it feels like a dad beach read. So I gave it three stars because it's not, it's not bad writing. I just didn't care about any of the things happening. I didn't care about the characters. Like, there's a bit where these, like, savage men attack them um, who've, like, kind of gone wild in the dark and stuff like that. But that only lasts a chapter and it's just it's really really hard because when you've got a totalitarian dystopia you're going to make comparisons to like viva vendetta or 1984 or even the hunger games and this didn't go to the extremes enough to be related to those it just felt like britain today but with even more police brutality and it was just a bit shit so i was this was the one that i was like I'm so, I'm just getting rid of it. I'm not even going to necessarily unhaul it to someone that I know because I don't think they'll enjoy it. I don't think they'll care. And I'll be taking it down from Waypoint Books as well because I just don't think it's worth putting your money behind. So, yeah, three stars, but borderline two. It's that, it's that side of the three stars. All right, let's move on to one that hopefully will be more positive than that because it's just boring. Okay. Oh, we've got a January one. Ah, oh, there we go. Pet. Pet was one of the first books I read of this year um, and haven't had a chance to kind of summarise it yet. Pet was, considering it's a middle grade, it took me a while to really understand what was going on in this novel. Um, and maybe that's because I'm an idiot. I don't know. But essentially, Pet. I thought this was Pet, but this is not Pet. This is Jam, the main character. Um, and she is the daughter of an artist who really puts everything she can into paintings. Um, Jam is non-binary, um, very, very supported by their parents, has a best friend who lives next door. So Pet is a monster that basically comes out of one of Jam's mum's paintings. And their one thing to do is to hunt demons. And I think the thing that tricked me, and this is a bit of a spoiler, is that fundamentally the demons aren't necessarily what we expect them to be, nor are the angels. Pet is kind of a monster slash angel. Um, and the whole point is that the monsters that Pet hunts are actually people doing awful things. It's a really interesting metaphor for that, in that, you know, the heroes aren't who we expect and the monsters aren't who we expect either. And it looks at child abuse and sexual assault and things like that in a very, very sensitive way. And it is beautifully written, but I am going to have to reread it because I have very, like the beginning five chapters, I was like, what? Um, and then once I finally got into the story, once Pet arrived and the action kind of started flowing and it was less introspective, then I could kind of follow it a bit better. Um, but it was beautifully written. I did really enjoy it, but it just took me a while to get there. And I think some middle grades, like I know that certainly with Kelly Barnhill, where there's a lot of use of metaphor in the narrative, it can be quite, it can become, it, it becomes more convoluted. But I appreciate that this book has quickly become people's favourites. And I think that's well deserved. It's a really beautiful book. Um, and if you're looking for a short middle grade read that doesn't feel like a middle grade, like it's definitely at that higher ability, I'm a fucking idiot so you'll need to be smarter than me, this is the one that I would recommend. I thought it was beautiful and excellent rep because it's own voices, so we love that. Um, and I don't think I have anything else to add. It was great. Okay, we're on five. We're on five, which means I might, depending on time, actually be able to beat my average. Oh. No, I'm not beating my average. That's disappointing. <laughs> um, I still have so many to review. 
I'm gonna have to come up with a new system. Maybe do half an hour instead of 20 minutes? I don't know. But anyway, so there you go. There are the books that I read over the last few months that I've been able to review for you briefly. Um, a nice mix of books that I absolutely fucking loved up there with the five stars and books that I absolutely fucking hated. So yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books. The links to these books will be down below. Obviously by buying any books from Waypoint Books, not only are you supporting an independent business, but you're supporting me and my content, which I really appreciate. There are also links below so that you can pre-order the Bridesmaid Survival Guide. The publishing date is still the 4th of June at the moment, but we are possibly going to be suffering some more delays, which should be a surprise to nobody. Um, so just bear that in mind. If you have ordered it, I will notify you should that day get pushed back. But for the moment, I'm pushing forward with that day and hoping for the best. Um, yeah, other than that, I hope you have a nice day and I will see you next time.